So very good morning again to all of you. And uh, again, coming back to who I am and why uh, 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 I'm here to talk to you all about writing winning proposal. Uh, I have been associated uh, with the climate change space for the last 12 years now. Uh, part of the network, which is an Indian network on ethics and climate change. And we are a network of about 22 different organizations uh, based across different ecosystems in India. And uh, since there is a network, it come, becomes very crucial also to raise funds for a different uh, organizations and different uh, uh, activities uh, over the last couple of years. And we have been doing that, uh, you know, looking at uh, coming up with proposals for uh, capacity building, coming up with resilience building proposals, coming up with education proposals, proposals for advocacy. And uh, the reality is that things are changing. Uh, even in the Indian landscape, a lot of the experiences that I come will come from the Indian landscape because we are based in India. Uh, and But it will not be as very different from what you are doing in Africa or from, you know, in Europe or even in America for that matter. And uh, things are changing. Uh, funding uh, avenues also are changing. And they are getting more up to date, getting much more, uh, you know, uh, what you say, technical also now. And uh, looking at also a lot of accountability they're asking for, as opposed to what they were doing about 20 years ago. And uh, these things have also made organizations like us also evolve over the last couple of years in terms of, you know, how does one uh, create those proposals that are really to the point that are really, uh, you know, uh, the language is what, uh, what the donor is looking for and the kinds of uh, initiatives that they're asking for. How does one align the work that we're doing at our organization to what the funding agencies or the donor agencies or the CSR programs are asking for? Uh, so today, this is what we're going to talk about, you know, in just a couple of, uh, I've got about 17, 18 slides and uh, looking at if you'll have any, con uh, you know, questions, if you have any comments, please feel free to chime in while the session is going on. Uh, we'll keep it as uh, uh, informal as possible. So to start with, yeah. So I was thinking, you know, uh, to, uh, this thing is what makes a grant proposal succeed in the first place? And this has been our, my experience and when I say my experience, I'm also talking about it is not a one man show. Writing a proposal includes an entire team. Actually, you know, you have a whole bunch of people that you work with from your organization. You have the people who are the program in the program part. You have people who are in the finance part. You have people who are, you know, uh, looking at campaigns. You have everybody, a whole bunch of people that come together to create a proposal, first of all. And it starts with, uh, you know, uh, brainstorming and it starts with, you know, conversations and it starts with the realities, ground realities of where you are. And that is how uh, you know what you need to do and what needs to be done. And uh, this is what we have been doing. And uh, this thing. so what, the, what a grant proposal actually does is one, it responds to the donor's needs and objectives, but also keeping in mind that you as an organization's needs and objectives are also met. And this is where you come in together, you know, bridging the gap for creating a proposal that uh, fits both the people's needs or both the organization's needs. It presents convincing problems based, uh, convincing problem based on analysis. And why I say analysis is because you need to show numbers, you need to show uh, the, uh, the reality of what, you, what problem you are, you are presenting and you need to show evidence for that. And we will get to how you do that. So that you also have to pre present those kinds of problems with an analysis that you think can be solved. And that leads to showing a viable solution to that problem. And there are steps to doing that, which we will get to, uh, get to in, the, in, the, in, uh, in the next couple of slides. And lastly, after all that is done, after you have all your information, after you have aligned yourself with all those things, you make sure that your proposal is well written and we will see how to do that as well. So what makes a great proposal? What is it that, you know, that really, really makes a proposal stand out? And these are a couple of, you know, key pointers that has helped us and helped me out Number one is coming up with a clear theory of change 
and a sharp results framework. And what is that we will get to, as I will explain to you. Again, as I was saying, you know, data-driven situation analysis and how do we get to that? We will come to that, uh, this thing. Also showcasing some of your achievements to, uh, to build your credibility, as well as to, you know, to show the donor organization that you have the experience as well. So those things, these are something that come in to uh, putting in your proposal as well. We also have now what has happened in the last couple of, you know, five, six years, many of the donors, many of the funding agencies, many of the CSR projects as well are asking after you finish the project. Now the project is uh, very time related, right? It might be a one year project. It might be a two year project. It might even be a three-year project or it can be longer or it can be even a shorter project. But what happens after you have invested all your time, all your energy, all your resources into that project, they want to know how sustainable is that is the initiative. So once you leave from the, your stakeholders with, without the, with the project, is the project going to be sustainable? Uh, is the initiative going to con continue without any more resources being added into the thing? And this is where you need to really brainstorm and look at whether, you know, the project that you're doing is going to lead to a sustainability. So you need to have an exit strategy as well. And they always ask for that. And, you know, when you're writing your reports as well, uh, many of you will know that at the, at the last final report that uh, you are, they ask for is how sustainable has your project been? And what do you envisage in the next couple of years with your stakeholders? And uh, again, lastly, is writing clearly and with brevity to your uh, to your, for the propo proposal. Now, it does not necessarily mean that you have to write in English, right? It also means that you can write in any other language that the donor agency is asking for. So there are a couple of agencies in India that you, that you are able to write in, in any language that you want. And as long as you're communicating clearly, as long as you're communicating, uh, you know, with, uh, with purpose, and uh, that helps. So you also make sure whether your do donor agency or the agency that you're writing to, is uh, able to uh, accept another language. So keep that in mind as well. So we'll start off with the whole idea of the theory of change and why I think it is very important, the theory of change. For us, over the last six years, this theory of change has made a drastic difference and uh, given us clear purpose for different kinds of interventions that we have wanted to do and that we are doing and that we want to do in the future. And the theory of change has helped us as an organization, as a network, and as a, uh, you know, uh, of, as a uh, functional NGO uh, to do different kinds of things. So first things first, this theory of change, you do not need a proposal for this. But what helps you is that if you start doing your theory of change within your organization or within the team that you are with, for whatever it is, it might be for an activity, it might be for an intervention, it might be for even a campaign for that matter. The theory of change largely, what it does, the theory of change is describes why change is needed and how it will happen. It is in simple terms, this is, it involves identifying how you would like the current situation, which is usually a problem situation, to an identified problem to change and how you think you can help that change to come about through your project. And this is what has helped us, you know, having this clear thought. So you can have your theory of change ready before even a call for proposals comes. And what are those, those keys, those impact, those are the key factors that ask for, you know, you need to know who your stakeholders are. You need to know your location where you're going to do this. And you need to know your key specific outcome. These are the intended impacts that you're looking for at the end of the day. Now we get to the theory of change. I really, uh, honestly speaking, this theory of change has changed the way we at the organization have worked and, you know, at Laya's end and at even at INEX end as well, you know, and the mapping of the theory of change has been a great exercise for the entire team, in fact. And this keeps us, you know, rooted into what exactly that we're going to do. So first things first is, as I was saying, you 
discuss within yourself you brainstorm what is the one core problem or you can have 10 different core problems but for each core problem you will have a separate theory of change so what is one core problem that you or your organization wants to address and change and how do you want to make it happen so that is going to be your problem statement and once you have your problem statement in place uh, so can we uh, Upasana, can we do this uh, with the team? Can we can we all come together and uh, focus on one problem statement since we are all uh, you know uh, 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 come together? Is that is that okay? Yeah, I think it would make sense if you know we can all think of one particular problem <laughs> and then we go ahead developing the yes, proposal. Yes, one particular problem. Yeah. yeah, so we can do that activity uh, through the the thing. So maybe we could have some in the chat box. Uh, So problem, a, a problem. So number one, we are looking at uh, since it is uh, uh, we are looking at uh, fifty by forty as an organization. Uh, maybe somebody from the team, uh, maybe Upasana, maybe from uh, fifty by forty, maybe a problem could come in from there that we are looking at addressing globally. It could be a generic problem. I mean, I would. But, uh... Yeah. I think it's something because you know climate change and food how Absolutely. how is climate change going to impact food systems globally and how can we you know make it more equitable and sustainable okay so the problem now you've already given solutions for it <laughs> so the problem is that let's let's uh, let's uh, let's uh, uh, you know uh, brainstorm on the problem the problem is that the food systems currently are not equitable could we say that Could we say that the the food systems are not equitable as one part of the as one part of the problem? Yeah. Okay. So this is just a very generic problem. So the food systems are not equitable. Let us look at also you narrow it down a little bit in a location. So let us yeah it is a bit general absolutely. So we go down. So the food systems are not equitable in let us say. Uh, is it okay if we do India for now? Would that be fine? Okay, just as an example. So the food systems are not equitable in India and leads to a climate crisis. I'm just, I'm just brainstorming, okay? So the uh, leading to a climate crisis or, uh, so I'm just writing this down, the... Food systems are not equitable in India. Yes, that will come. Uh, that will come in our in our uh, inputs, and then that will come in the impact of, uh, listenery. So first, we're just writing the the, the the problem. Are not equitable in India, leading to higher emissions it does not need to have uh, uh, that many number of words or characters it is it is a problem that you want to address so it can be as big as one paragraph or it can be as specific as uh, as uh, leading to higher carbon emissions uh, that impact the ndcs okay i'm just writing that okay so Impact the impacts the NDC, which is the national government contribution. Okay, so this is the kind I've just given a generic statement here. The food systems are not equitable in India, leading to higher emissions that impact the NDC. Now, you as an organization are saying this is the problem that is there in your location. Okay, so that is the core problem. If you look at the question over here, it says, What is the problem you are trying to address? And the change you want to make happen. So what will be the change that you want to make happen? So the change that you want to make happen will be your long-term goal over here. If you see the green circle down here and the impact and the change. So that change will come in down later on. So the change you want to make it happen is to make the food systems more equitable with lower emissions and a positive impact on the NDCs. The NDCs is the nationally determined contribution which the which each country has put in for the 
uh, Paris Agreement, uh, you know, uh, the the commit the commitment for the NDCs, and they are largely mitigative in in this in that sense. So this is what we have seen also that uh, you know they are still impacting the NDCs in the, the commitments that have been put in. So that is the thing. Okay, so now we have our core problem. This is what we have done brainstorm. I can't hear you all on the mic, but you this you know this usually takes about a couple of hours to come up to the core problem when you're discussing uh, with one another, you know, somebody will talk about from the campaign's perspective. Somebody will talk about from the program's perspective. What is the problem? Somebody will talk about from the gender perspective. What is the problem? Somebody will talk about from the advocacy perspective. What is the problem? So you have to come together and, you know, this, and come to a consensus that's saying, putting all those things together, this is the problem that we as an organization want to address. So now we as an organization have said that the food systems are not equitable in India and they lead to higher emissions and imp that impact the NDCs. Okay, so that is the, we, can you all agree on that for now? I'm going to assume Ella said yes. Okay, thanks. Next thing is that when you're looking at, uh, when you're looking at uh, the problem is you have to first map out your stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders that you think that you are going to be working with, working along with, and working for? So there are three different things. You know, who you are going to be working with side by side, who are those stakeholders that you're going to be working with, who you are going to be working along with, who are those collaborators that you could be working with, and thirdly, who are the stakeholders that are going to be working with from the community perspective? So we can get a listing. Maybe some of you can just put down. Uh, in general, some of the stakeholders you think that you should be working with to address this problem. Let's have about three or four stakeholders. There are no wrong answers. Huh? So you can please full, feel free to put in your answers over here. We consider those as stakeholders because this is just a mock, uh, a mock uh, theory of change. Okay, so we have Ministry of Climate Change. So in India, we call it the MOEF triple C. Okay. We have farmers, yes, farmers. We have corporates, I'll put corporates instead of companies, cor corporates. So the MOEF triple C and we'll put it government agency. Okay, MOEF triple C and I'm just typing it here. Farmers, okay, so we have rural communities. Super fantastic research organizations. Okay, so I think we can, you all are getting the gist of it, right? So you all know who are those stakeholders that uh, that you think that you should be you should be working with for to address this problem. Let us stop at this right now. So we have about one, two FPOs, absolutely. So they will come under the farmers. Uh, they will come, so you can bifurcate them accordingly. So with, within farmers, you can have women farmers, you can have male farmers, you can have dairy farmers you can have a whole bunch of uh, different kinds of farmers right and so you can break the you can break the stakeholders down as well depending on how deep you want to go into engaging with each stakeholder so for now let us look at the let us look at these these three uh, ones which is the uh, government agencies the farmers and corporate so you list these down the stakeholders down as one one stakeholder will be the government agencies and MOEF triple C. One will be farmers and one will be the corporates. So now we look at each individual stakeholder. Each individual stakeholder. Now please understand that this kind of a process takes about a couple of days, okay, to come up with your stakeholders. Again, you go back and forth with your team. You go back and forth with one another. People are arguing, saying these people are not as important as the, as the corporates are right now or the corporates are not as important as the government agencies or the research organizations need to be prioritized. So this kind of back and forth will go on within the team, will go on with one another. And it's, it's, a, it's a process that takes about a couple of days, actually, the, the coming up to the consensus. And that's, it, it, that's a joy and that's the uh, you know, uh, fun of doing a theory of change within the team. So right now we have, we have brainstormed and said that these three are the, the, the stakeholders. So now from these three stakeholders, let us look at one stakeholder to begin with. So we'll start with, should we do farmers or should we do the government? 
or should we do corporate? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Farmers it is, all right. So we are looking at farmers as our stakeholders. So this is the first stakeholder that we're looking at. Just go up here. Superb. So farmers. So now you have to keep in mind when you're also looking at uh, a theory of change, there are four main aspects that are important for a theory of change. One is the inputs. One is the activities. One is the outputs. One is the outcomes. These four are the main four key points when you're doing a theory of change. So first we will do is with regards to the, there are four main key aspects of a theory of change. One is on in, one is called inputs. If you see that they're put in brackets over there, inputs, activities, outputs, and outcomes. Now realize, keep in mind also that we are still not got into the project writing part yet. Okay. We are still trying to frame what we as an organization are going to do to address this key problem. The problem of what was the problem? The problem was that uh, where are we going? Food in inequity. Yeah, exactly. For this thing. Okay, so uh, that was the problem. There's uh, food systems are not equitable in India, leading to higher emissions. So now we work with the farmers. So now to go coming to the farmers, you put your farmer where the stakeholders written here. You put farmer over here. Okay, so I will get back to this. Okay, so where stakeholders are, you put farmers. So the first thing we will brainstorm is on the inputs. Now, if you're looking at engaging with farmers, what is it you think the inputs that you are going to need when you're going to engage with farmers or the skills that you and your organization is going to need that are going to engage with farmers? So what do you think are those, what those skills uh, that you're going to do or the resources that are going to be needed to engage with farmers? We're going to need educational tools, definitely. We're going to need translation. <coughs> Absolutely. Finances, manpower. Market development. All right, so we can stick to these. Uh, we can stick to these uh, four right now. Risk management we won't come to so right now. Uh, Dick Sony will come to risk management later. But uh, well, let's look at uh, market development. You're going to need money. You're going to need educational tools, and you're going to need uh, translation. Okay, so say these are the four inputs that we're going to be needing for for, for to engage with farmers, right? So we'll list those down. We're going to need educational tools. We are going to need translation materials. You're going to need finances and you're going to need manpower to because you realize that your manpower in the team right now is not as much as it is as, as you are going to need to engage with those, that, those farmers, right? So that is going to be your inputs. Now you come down to bring that change, to bring, to bring that change of, uh, for them to uh, make it more equitable. And with the inputs that you think you're going to need, you're going to need to put in those activities now to create those activity, to create those educational tools, to make those translations, to raise that money and to have those, uh, that team, that manpower. What do you think are those activities that you as an organization are going to need to do? Fundraising for sure. You're going to need to organize a consultation. You're going to need community mobilization. You're going to need awareness sessions. You're going to need capacity building program. So you're going to uh, looking at hiring. So for all these things, you're going to list it all down. You know, when you put, uh, when you start brainstorming, you're going to start looking at uh, this thing. So these activities are going to be holding consulting consultation sessions. Okay. Now this will also help if you start putting numbers to it, you know, if you, so 
how many consultations are you going to have? Are you going to have it in? So we are talking about India. Are you going to have it in in four regions of India? Are you going to be having it in all the states of India? Are you going to be looking at just two states in India? So this is when you start brainstorming within the thing, you know, within your organization. Where are we going to do this? What is the location that we are going to be doing that? So you start four locations of India, like north, south, east, and west. So I'm going to have four consultations. I'll need to have four consultations with uh, with uh, in four different regions. That is going to be one activity. Second activity is on community mobilization. How am I going to mobilize the community now? Once I've had the consultations, what is the community mobilization that I'm going to uh, going to be having? I'm going to have uh, you know. Uh, what kind of mobilization that we're going to look at? Uh, maybe uh, looking at maybe uh, mobilize the community to uh, maybe a food festival, organize five different food festivals. That is one activity that we're going to do. Create awareness sessions with who? Awareness sessions are going to be with who? I'm going to have awareness sessions with women farmers, with male farmers, with young farmers, with FPOs. So you can list down all the different activities that you are going to do with in these four regions north south east and west okay so these are the different activities that i'm going to do with regards to hiring what activities i'm going to do i'm going to hire five more campaign developers i'm going to hire five more translators so you know exactly that you're going to hire five more translators to make that change right for uh, this thing so when you do these activities this is also the it comes up to a big list actually of different kinds of activities that you within your organization know that you're capable of, of doing, that you want to do. And you'll also have a long-term plan in terms of maybe we don't have the funds right now to do it, but we want to do that, right? So you will still list these down. So you list all these down and then you come down to the envisage outputs. Now, when you're talking about outputs is what we're talking about in terms of numbers that, you know, they were asking for how, what is your outreach going to be like? How, how far are you going to engage? How, how many uh, communities are you going to engage with? So if we're talking about uh, out, outputs again, so your outputs are going to be such that having a consultation with 500 women farmers or having an output, uh, having a uh, you know awareness session or a capacity building program for 7,000 community members. So you have your outputs over there. And these are the outputs that you will monitor when it comes to writing your proposal. These are the outputs that your funding or donor or the funding agency is going to ask you for when it comes to writing a proposal. And we will get to that. I will show you how we will do that. You know, writing those numbers, and you're going to be you're going to have to monitor these. So if ten thousand people have showed up for your program. You write that 10,000 people have showed up for your program, but how do you monitor 10,000 people showing up for your program? So you have to develop monitoring tools for these kinds of things. So maybe a registration form, maybe an online form, depending on where you are. Now, we work a lot with tribal communities and the play, or the places that we work with don't even have access to electricity or you know but, uh, mobile phones. So for us, we have to come up with different monitoring tools. So you have to see the realities of where you're working with, who you're working with, and decide what kind of tools you want to create to monitor those outputs. And we will come to that. How do you monitor those outputs? And those outputs are going to give you the change in terms of engagement numbers that you have been able to do through this activity. And then we come down to the outcome. Are you all following this? Is anybody having any difficulties? Because I can't see the chat right now. Okay. If you all are following this, please uh, just say yes, because then we will go to the outcome. Yes. Okay, great. Now the outcomes is technically the short term change that your activities and your outputs are going to bring about. So some of the short term changes will be from the first activity saying that looking at the consultation that we have had. Okay, say now we have had these four consultations in the north, south, east and west of India. And we have had 500 farmers uh, who have participated each. So 500, 500, that becomes 2,000 farmers, right? What has been the output of it? 2,000 farmers have participated in the consultations. Now, what will be the outcome of the thing? Out of those 2,000 farmers, 
how many farmers have been able to take something forward from that consultation now you know that right when you have a you have a workshop you'll have 10000 people in your workshop but not 10000 people will be able to bring about change from there maybe it is one person maybe it is two persons maybe it is five persons maybe it is 500 persons so you can decide this is where you have to work towards in terms of what is the short term outcome that i want to see so out of those 2000 farmers you will have to envisage and say from them maybe 200 farmers will take the process forward within their own local government bodies that is the that is the outcome that you want to see and this is where you will work with those 200 farmers to bring about that change while you're working with those 2000 farmers to to find these 200 farmers who will bring about the change and that is what your funding agency is going to look for those 200 farmers out of the money that they have the resources they have spent for your 2000 farmers engagement they will want to see those 200 farmers what is the change that these 200 farmers have been able to bring about and you should be able to articulate that change and that will come in when you are writing a proposal later on will come the impact and the change which is going to stem from what the impact and the change is going to stem from the problem statement that we had where we said that where is it gone let me get the food systems are not equitable in india leading to higher emissions that impact the ndc so your long term impact and your change is going to be 200 farmers have been able to change their food system and make it more equitable and reduce their emissions now that is going to be your goal from the problem statement so to reach to 200 farmers you're going to have to work with 2000 farmers are you getting that and that makes your and that makes your goal much much more workable and tangible and this change is going to happen this change can also happen after the project gets over you know so that is why they look for the when you are when you are reporting they look for the outcomes more than they look for the impact and change that you have been able to bring about within the uh, within the time frame of the project so your impact and change is going to be much much longer maybe 3 or 4 or 5 years but your outcomes and your outputs these are the two things that will be able to show immediately through the through the program uh, you know so the outcomes you can also you can also monitor them within 6 months to 8 months of a given intervention and you build tools for those and we can come up we can discuss what kinds of tools we can build for uh, you know monitoring those outcomes and those outputs as well so do you all have any questions regarding to the regarding the theory of change one thing i just want to make clear that there are different kinds of theory of changes i mean you can do it up and down you can do it laterally you can do it vertically you can do it horizontally you can do it sleeping you can do it standing you can do it in different ways but you can see and you can do it into in a way that is comfortable for all of you now this one goes from the problem on top to the to the solution down you can also twist it and put the problem down and turn it up from you know looking at the inputs activities outputs and outcomes from the bottom up and then the impact so you can do it in the whole different ways there are different templates also online that you could find uh, for for the theory of change and i think it would be very good exercise for all you organizations to do the theory of change have any of you have done a theory of change from here from who are in the in the, in the participants today olu what is it would you like to go yeah okay fine uh thank you so much um, myra for the presentation yeah um <clears throat> okay i think i'll start with this uh, i took a course on advocacy with philanthropy university and um there was a lot of engagement on theory of change yeah um it just kind of give you an idea of how best, <laughs> how best to transition your ideas your knowledge into a solution into outcomes into workable outcomes 
I mean, something that is, um, what do you call it now, um, smart, yeah? So that yes. you can be able to track those progress because you don't want to do it, um, uh, how do I call it? you don't want to do it as business, business as usual, but you want to do yeah. it in a way that it will get you <clears throat> the goal you want within a record time frame. So from that sense, you then begin to, um, just like you were brainstorming the other time, you brainstorm on a number of several pathways, a number of strategies that you want to adopt to achieve that aim. Then you look at the central uh, idea, maybe a keyword or a central thing that cut across all of those strategies. That is what you focus, that is what you focus your energy on the most. Because by the time you're able to achieve that, take for instance, maybe what you need to do is to incentivize your employees. So if incentivizing your employee would result into a number of things, it can help to boost your outreach program, it can help to boost um, your advocacy, it can help to boost your policy engagement, it can go a long way with your lobbying and, and even um, raising funds. So if that is what you feel will be the right to be able to achieve, say you want um, an increase or um, a development in your organization, say in your uh, work, say 50 by 40. Now you want um, you want to achieve uh, by the end of 2023, you want to achieve an increased rate of um, having partners. I mean, maybe you want to have more partners, or you want to be able to reach out to more um, audience. Then maybe the theory of change can now say, okay, the key way for you to achieve this is through advocacy, through engagement, through outreach, through Absolutely. this and that. But how do you not get it done? By having, maybe by having um, more support for your employees to be able to go the extra mile. Yeah, so how do we get the support? Is by maybe having a good living condition or making sure that they do remote work or making sure, you know, yeah. all of those things. once all of that comes to play, so by the time you're able to tackle that key thing, then you'll be able to achieve your goal even before the time that you've set for yourself. So that is just um, a key way to be able to express theory of change. Thanks, Oliver Tristan. Uh, I'm, it's, it's superb that, you know, and I like what you said that, you know, focus your energy on the most in during uh, this process. And this is really what, once you focus your energy on this, come spend a couple of days, maybe a week or two also on the theory of change for those different stakeholders. So if you do it for the farmers, you do it for the government bodies, you do it for the research organizations, you have different maps of theories of change for different stakeholders already in place. And why I'm saying that is because when you come to the next step, when there is a call for proposal, when there is a call for proposal in terms of, uh, you know, say that uh, there is a call for engaging with farmers going there okay you will you find uh, there's a there's a funding or propose a funding call to engage with farmers you already have your map laid out so you don't have to brainstorm or you don't have to again reword or rework what you have already done you already know what you want to do and what has to be done right because that mapping is already done this becomes like a three or four sheeter uh, document this theory of change so once you have that let us move on to the next part of uh, the this thing so we've not reached the proposal writing yet okay we're still we're still looking at wow getting before the proposal what is it that we as an organization need to do so as i was saying earlier why it is so important uh, to look at data-driven tools to support the decision that you're making and to support the problems that uh, you need to address for this thing. Again, this mapping really, really helps in terms of, you know, what do you think is possible that you could, you as an organization could do, where your strengths lie, where the organization's weaknesses lie, where the opportunities are, given the current realities, and what are the threats that are already there? So if you have this mapped out, you already know. So now if you know that the government restrictions, and let's go to the threats, okay? Saying that government restrictions and lack of political will is this current situation right now. So you'll know that right now we in the organization don't have the kind of capacity to deal or to work with those kinds of restrictions or political will. 
so let us not focus on that right now let us that let that not be our priority so then you already know what are your strengths what are your weaknesses what are your opportunities and then we can look at these three so suppose you you look at the threats okay the threats also are there we have the strengths and the weaknesses we have the opportunities this is a swot analysis but it also helps for each of those stakeholders to do a swot analysis of each of those stakeholders that you have made so the farmers the government uh, agencies uh, the research organizations institutes all those kinds of thing you do a swot analysis of them and this so it comes from brain uh, brainstorming and from again grassroots realities when you're on the ground you know the realities of the ground so it will also help to get people who are in program people who are working with communities to be a part of the to be a part of this this uh, this process once you have had all those things mapped you've done the theory of change and you've done the swot analysis in fact when you're doing the theory of change the 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 swot analysis has already happened you will understand what are the activities that are there what what can you do, do what are the activities that you cannot do why you cannot do that the the analysis will already start happening within the theory of change framework and the discourse planning of uh, when that is happening now we wait for the call for proposals or it depends on how whether the, the donor has approached you all whether there has been uh, an open call for proposal whether there has been any you know any there are immense ways of uh, getting uh, to uh, funding proposals right it could be a csr fund it could be a government fund it could be a donor agency it could be a foreign fund it could be a local fund it could be a regular donor a whole bunch of things right uh, now when you first things first is you see whether you fit in the criteria of what the donor is asking for so the criteria might be a whole bunch of things again suppose the criteria says we are looking for engagement in bangladesh now that doesn't work for us in india right because we are looking at addressing the problem in india where we are saying that uh, india has the the problem is with equitable uh, food systems in india so now we are automatically we don't fit into that into that <coughs> conversation so we go to the problem statement again when we have this thing you figure out okay do you fit the criteria of the proposal now what is your problem statement going to be your problem statement is already the the problem statement is already the this thing that we have already mentioned in the theory of change right absolutely the food system are not equitable but now what you do is you tailor make it for the proposal that the funding agency is asking for maybe they are not talking about all food system maybe they are talking about the dairy food system or they are talking about the meat food system or they are not they are talking about emissions coming in from transportation or they are talking about emissions coming in from cattle feed or they are talking about emissions coming in from restaurants let us look at so you tailor make it according to that because you already know that this is the problem that you want to address but you will now go into the little bit more deeper to fit what you are doing as well as to fit what the funding agency or the donor agency is asking for so you will we just read this the problem statement gives an explanation about the issue that is being addressed by the project and why it needs to be addressed so you already have the you've already done the you know the, the mapping right when by by we are looking at those areas you already have that written in the theory of change and it argues in favor of implementing the project in the proposed area in the existing condition existing condition condition is the reality of what is there happening right now again back to this thing it is critical that we give evidence to what we are writing in this section of the proposal so when we are writing this you it is good to give numbers saying that this is the emission the emissions right now these are the ndcs right now we were said ndcs so how they are addressing that so you might need to do a little bit of research you might need to get into a little bit of you know conversations with some of the experts who are in those key areas to just get a quote or to get some numbers coming in to substantiate why you are saying that it is a problem again as i was saying evidence can be in the form of research existing literature data collected by the organization itself and data collected by the organization itself also adds to your credibility saying that you know they know that okay 
50 by 40 is working on the ground. They've got this kind of data coming in. They're working with communities. They're working with the government agencies. And this is about the data that they have been working with over the past couple of projects that they've had. So your problem statement is stated now there from what you, once you have uh, addressed that, we got that. Now we go to the goal. So the goal of the entire thing was that we want to make it more equitable and we want to make the food system or reduce the carbon emissions, right? Leading to lower carbon emission that have a positive impact on the NDC. So you, again, the goal is something that is outside the purview of your project. Because as I was saying, like, you know, one project might not be able to address the entire goal. It might lead towards the change in the goal, but it is a long-term objective of the project. It is a long-term. So this could be maybe the same goal can be for three or four projects that you're applying for. So one could be with farmers, one could be with uh, government institutes, depending on what kind of project proposals that you're writing, right? So the goal is, it, it's not, it's, it's general, no doubt, but it is also showing the change that you as an organization want to bring. So again, when you're writing a proposal, and I'm sure you all will know that, that each proposal has got just one goal that they ask for. And you can't have three or four goals for a proposal. And that I've never seen any proposal that asks for three or four goals at the same time. So that's why I've written it there. It can, it, uh, there is only one project goal. If anybody else has had a proposal where they've written two goals, please share with me because I've never come across that. And the goal could be the title of your project. And then you have your problem statement that comes in first. So the goal could be addressing the uh, making it making it more equitable uh, with uh, you know lower emissions and a positive impact on the NDC. But then you have your problem statement that comes, and that is usually what uh, what they ask for. Now we come to the project objectives. Now the project objectives are the actually the meat of all your of your proposal. Your project objectives are very specific. They're very, uh, you know, uh, they give you uh, they give you the compass towards reaching your goals. And these are the objectives that you will have to fulfill within your project. This is what they will monitor you. This is what they will ask you to report on, on your project objectives. And from my experience over the last couple of years is Maximum donor agencies want about three or maximum four objectives in your project that you that they will look for. And why they tell you to low to reduce your objectives because it becomes easier to monitor these objectives if you have less objectives. The more objectives you have, the more indicators you will have. We will come to indicators, and the more monitoring frameworks are going to require monitoring tools for each of those indicators. So the lesser objectives you have, the better it is for you. And so if you're looking at a project objective, supposing we say, let's go with three project objectives for, for this project where we're talking about the food systems are not equitable in India. So if you're looking at the objectives from the stakeholders, we, we have those three stakeholders, right? So the first stakeholder will be the farmers. The second stakeholder will be with the uh, government agencies. And the third stakeholder will be with the research institutes. Let's look at these three. Maybe these are the three objectives you're going with. We decide you want to go with these three objectives. So the first objective that you're going to be writing <coughs> is your objectives also have to reflect change. Okay, keep that in mind. Your objectives are going to reflect change because that is what is going to change, that is going to show the transition or the, or the change with, uh, from the problem to the goal. So your first thing is going to be, if you're talking about farmers, let's look at the farmers. So make it as specific as possible, make it time friendly. So in two years, 200 farmers are going to change the way they farm. Now that is something that is specific. 200 farmers in India are going to change the way they farm. Let's put it. A, let's put a geography to it also. So that could be your project objective. Is that a general objective or it's an objective? You know, it is an objective. So we are saying we are going to have three objectives. 
So first objective is going to be with say 200 farmers. I'm just writing it down here in the chat box. Okay, 200 farmers in two years. I'm just writing. I will see it. Okay, in two years, 200 farmers in two years change the way they farm. Okay, so change the way they farm. That is a, this thing, change the way they farm because they want to see the change in the food systems, right? Change the way they farm leading to lower emissions. Leading to lower emissions. Okay, now let's say, say this is the objective that we're looking at 200 farmers in two years, changing the way they farm leading to lower emissions, right? So now we are addressing is that uh, you, the objectives refer to the results you expect from the project. Okay, so that is one. They describe the focus population and the desired change among the population. It addresses that. It includes the location and time period for each objective. 200 farmers in India, I forgot to mention that. 200 farmers in India, uh, okay. Reflect the intended changes in systemic conditions or behaviors that must be achieved to, uh, to accomplish this objective. Now this you can also do in your indicator. Because what happens now you have three objectives if you know after objective, each objective, they will ask you what are those indicators that you are going to be putting. But let us come to the indicators after the after the objective. So we'll finish this first objective where we said 200 farmers. I've just written, I've just given a couple of, you know, when you're writing, uh, when you're writing uh, the objectives, keep these in mind. You know, these, these keywords are what is going to help you monitor. Because if you say decrease, you'll be able to show the numbers. If you say increase, you'll be able to show the number of increase. If you say strengthen, you'll be able to show those numbers. How many numbers? Okay, so if you have these kinds of, uh, if you show these kinds of uh, this thing in your objective, so it could be 200 farmers in two years increase their process, farming process or change, uh, you know, strengthen their, let's say strengthen the, uh, how do you uh, understand to say, Strengthen the organic farming processes. Okay, strengthen the organic farming processes leading to lower emissions. So you see when you're, let's say you have to keep brainstorming to see how smart and how monitorable and how in numbers, in numbers, numbers crunchable is your uh, objective because they will ask you to report according to your objectives. And then you'll be able to show so when you have these 200 farmers, you will have to monitor these 200 farmers to show that they have been able to increase the way they farm for organic farming and leading to lower emissions. So now leading to lower emissions means you'll be or you'll also have to monitor how emissions are being lowered. So now those are the things, the tools you will have to create to do that. Also keep in mind is when you're creating objectives, don't look at, you know, activities. These training, Provisions, producing, establishing, creating, these all are activities that will come under your activities. So training programs, providing for resources, producing uh, low carbon agriculture, these are all activities that will come in. So keep in mind that when you're, when you're framing your objective, stay away from activities, but show a number or a numerical change in, you know, in the number, increase or decrease. And this is what they will look for. Now, once we have, we have written that 200 farmers in two years change the way they farm leading to lower emissions. They will ask you how, what are those indicators that you are going to show that you have been able to bring about this change. Now, these indicators can be three, four, five, you can have about, you know, I would say stick to about four indicators. So to show four indicators for this, you'll have to, you'll have to put below your objective. And now if you have a format of a, uh, of a project uh, proposal format, you will see indicators in there. And those indicators are what they, you will have to monitor. When I say monitor is you will have to look at, you know, each of those things and to see how change has been brought in. So when you're talking about indicator, it is something to measure the result. So to reach these 200 farmers, what did we say we are going to engage with? 2000 farmers, right? To begin with. So one indicator will be 
will be 20%, no 10%, 10% of 2000 farmers now work closely with 50 by 40. You think this is something that could be monitored? Now, when I say monitored, is that something that if, if your evaluator comes or if your funding agency comes and says, Myron, can I meet one of those 10% from your farmer? Do we have that kind of data with us? Because they're saying these 10,000 is these 10 percent is the 200 farmers in two years, right? So we should be able to have those numbers. So how are we going to do that? We're going to need to have registration form. We're going to need to develop tools for that. From these 200 farmers, for that, this thing going to develop tools where you're going to see your name of the farmer, the phone number of the farmer, the uh, location of the farmer, maybe GPS tracks, depending on depending on what how how closely you want to monitor them. Maybe they are able to have a WhatsApp group with these 200 farmers. So if that is a thing, then you say a WhatsApp group created for 200 farmers. We can do that as well. It all depends on what team, the team that you are working with and the strength that it is to monitor. If you have 200 people working, then each person can monitor each farmer, right? So, but that's not practical. So you have to see within, within your team, who is going to be monitoring? There should be a monitoring and evaluation team as well. And you all can be a part of it, no doubt, but everybody should be responsible for something. So you develop those tools to monitor this 10% of the 2000 farmers. And this developing of the tools, keep in mind that also when you're doing your budgeting, you add, you add your resources for developing these tools because that will be very important. And once you have robust tools, your project proposal becomes really easy to monitor over the period of two years or three years or whatever timing. So keep that, you have to keep budgeting aside for monitoring and evaluation tools. And I think many of you are already doing that, if I'm not mistaken, for, you know, do, uh, for monitoring and evaluation. Because even developing tools takes time. It also takes, uh, you know, you, it, it takes resources in having somebody outside of the outside of the organization to come and show you different kinds of tools for this thing and it's, it's a good investment to have in an organization. So it would be nice to factor in your budget for monitoring and evaluation and creating of tools within the budget of the proposal as well. And these tools can be developed after the proposal has been sanctioned. You don't have to develop these tools before the proposal has been sanctioned. So you have time for that, which also means that for your performance indicators, you will also have to develop a baseline, a baseline of these 2000 farmers. Because if you're saying that these 2000 farmers to show change, right? To show change of those 2000 farmers saying that currently they are not in equitable uh, food system. So how, what is the baseline that you are going to develop to start from zero? So you have to show that baseline. So you have to develop baseline. And that is the baseline is the first thing you do once your project gets sanctioned is for each of these indicators, you develop your baseline for each of them. So make sure that your or your interventions and your indicators are smart in that sense. They are, you know, you are uh, in, in that sense that they are, again, monitorable, they're monitorable, they're evaluatable, they can be put in numbers because this is what people are asking for. They're very quantitative. Qualitative, yes, you'll be able to do that. Maybe for one indicator, you'll be able to show. But uh, right now, many funding agencies, donor agencies, CSRs, Government agencies are not looking at qualitative indicators. They want to see quantitative indi indicators in terms of what are the change you are going to bring by numbers. And they want to see large numbers. So keep that in mind. Do you all have any questions regarding the indicators and regarding the uh, regarding the objectives? I can't hear you. Pradeep, hi Pradeep, how are you? Pradeep, are you, you may to have say to, something? You may have uh, to put that in mind. text because we're having a uh, trouble hearing you.
let him put out index we will uh, address it uh, this thing so with regards to the performance once you have these in place you know your the the content for your uh, uh, the proposal becomes very very easy because then it's just a matter of elaborating in terms of what you're going to do right and this again so after you have got your indicators you will see from the indicators and from your theory of change excuse <laughs> me from your theory of change remember we did the activities and we did the inputs over there what are those key activities that is going to feed into those specific objectives that are there so you have the objectives with the farmers you have the objective with the uh, government agencies you have the objective with the uh, research institutes so what are those uh, those uh, those activities that are going to be there in for each of those each of those uh, objectives right and they will fit under those indicators so you have all your things so you, again i have this list with some down you know have organizing training workshops street shows rallies creating a baseline having conferences you know capacity building organizational development advocacy development of a support strategy a whole different kinds of this, uh, things now what also happen is that while you're doing your activities it is also very good to do a project implementation of your activities and by project implementation of your activities is it gives you a mapping of when you are going to do what activity so suppose in the project is about say a two year project or a three year let's say let it is a three year project now if it's a three year project you can split it up into four uh, four quarters uh, a year and you have uh, four three uh, 12 you have 12 quarters right so in your first quarter what is it that you're going to do so the first quarter is they're going to look at you know creating a baseline uh, for this thing for so so creating a baseline please elaborate on what is required for creating a baseline yes virginia when you're creating a baseline again going back to your indicator going back to your indicator that is going to be the uh, uh, can i just read this i suppose it would be more beneficial to have generic baseline during project scouting to form a basis for the rationale behind the proposal while the baseline can be further expressed in specifics after sanction of the absolutely absolutely there is no point in you know spending too much time on your baseline before the project has been sanctioned because you need to also budget for it right you need to go down to the ground you need to have focus group discussion you need to uh, meet with different communities you need to even look at a statistician maybe you need to hire a couple of people depending on how robust or how how the project is. so will uh, so great so for creating a baseline exactly and of uh, olu watson has said that you know you know look at the baseline after the this thing it's create a generic baseline in the beginning the baseline would be like look you know we'll we'll we will monitor so even when you're creating a baseline you don't need to look at 200 farmers you can do even 1% of that and you can say for you know it's like well this we're just working with 10 farmers to create a baseline or 20 farmers to create a baseline so the uh, that that will give you a rough idea of the community that you're working with so this is what we do as well we don't work with uh, we are I mean when you're creating the baseline if you're looking at 5000 uh, uh, farmers to work with we will look at maybe 100 farmers or 150 farmers yes focus group discussions can be a basis for baseline absolutely because that in fact that is one of the uh, especially when you are working with communities virginia it is one of the best uh, tools to uh, look at or a best the thing to work with focus uh, having focus group discussions and bringing those numbers from there so you can create develop a baseline from your focus group discussion absolutely but keep that in mind when you're doing all this thing even to to generate a baseline put it as an activity because then you can budget it you budget it for your you keep money, you keep money aside from the project to do your baseline because once your baseline is there because every time you report every time you report you have to show from the baseline what has been the change so your baseline says that 2000 farmers have uh, 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 you know need to be focused on because they're not uh, equitable so from there the first year reporting you will say 500 farmers then they will buy to 1000 farmers so you have a baseline from that this thing and they will they will this thing because then they will ask you from that baseline how much have you deviated or were you able to reach those 200 2000 uh, 2000 farmers <coughs> those 200 farmers 
if you have not been able to that's when you report why you have not been able so your baseline is going to be very very important for the thing and even articulating that in the proposal <laughs> So I was saying, so also keep this in mind. They will also ask you now, for, for, for funding agencies, donor agencies, corporates are also asking for your outputs, your outcomes, your impact. Now your impact, as I was saying, is going to be much larger than what the project is going to be. <laughs> Excuse me. Let me just take this. Hmm. So you already have your outputs. Your outputs are what your what is going to come out from the input so if you're going to have workshops 2000 work you're going to have 300 workshops so from the 300 workshop 5000 people have participated or 10000 people have participated or you have spent money on you have you know on social media from the social media what has been your outreach from there so your outputs is going to be the outreach that you have had over the over the over the project activity right so these are numbers again qualitative numbers quantitative numbers that will be coming in in terms of you know the number of workshops that you have had the number of training programs the number of uh, travels that have happened why they have happened all those kinds of things the outcome is from those workshops who has been able to you know show some results so this is again as i was saying you will monitor this for you will monitor this you will create tools for this and we have a whole different bunch of tools for uh, thing. One of the tools that I do for education is, you know, create a post and a pre, a pre-test and a post-test. So, so supposing I'm having a workshop with you online, I will have a pre, pre uh, form, a pre-filled form, a, a form that is filled before the program, asking key questions. So I'm doing a program on climate change, uh, climate change and climate science. Let's say I'm doing a program on climate science. Uh, so I will ask the person, on a scale of one to 10, uh, you know, how much do you know about science right now? So it will be, okay, I know five. On a scale of one to 10, I know five. Or, you know, before the program, before you, uh, this thing, uh, what has been your knowledge base for this thing? I've been, I've read only three or four books or watched two or three films or something like that. And the outcome, for so the outcomes, what you have to do is you don't send uh, uh, the monitoring tool immediately. You have to wait for some time. You have to give time for uh, the participant to reflect. You have to give time for the participant to be able to internalize and make that change. So what I do is for an yeah, educational program, after six months, I will send a, a form out asking, hey, hi, how are you? Uh, do you remember me? You participated in this program of ours. And uh, with, you, with you and see, you know, what have you been able, what have you been up to after that? Has your has your knowledge changed after the program? What is the change that you have been able to bring? What is the change that you have been able to bring within your community? All depending on what exactly you want to see the change that you want. And that is what, when you get those forms out, is what you will report on. Those are what you will report on, saying that these, from those 500 people, 200 people responded, and they said they were able to bring about change. Now, don't feel sad if people say, oh, I'm not, was, I was not able to do anything. I was not able to do anything. Uh, so if you were not able to do anything, why were you not able to do anything? Then you'll get to understand the reality of it. Maybe, okay, there was a death in the family. Or I was not interested. This is not my kind of thing. So you'll be able to also, you'll be able to also understand the reality of it. So if there are something negative coming in, please report on the negative note. So this will also help the funding agency to see what kind of trajectory they want to take. Sunday James is saying, please, if it is possible, put in a slide of every. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We'll uh, send a slide to all of you. The slides will be sent. If you all need any more help in developing monitoring tools, if you all need any help in developing the theory of change for your organization, or the, please feel free to get in touch with me. I'll be very happy to help you out. But keep the mind. The outputs, outcomes, and impact your project reporting. And your project reporting is what is going to help with getting better. These people are reporting, you know, the reports are really, really to the point. The reports are really, really, you know, uh, quantitative. 
let us work with these organizations much more so let us look at you know creating while you're also creating a good project proposal you also need to keep in mind how your proposal is going to feed into a great project reporting for you and many of the many of the organization ask for a six monthly activity report and a annual project uh, uh, narrative report so the narrative report will feed from all these outputs and the outcomes that are there and impact <laughs> to is a monitor the monitoring to not an example of an output to will help you get to an output so monitoring tool is completely different see upasna also yours approaching restaurants to go vegan that is an activity that you have put there the change that you the impact that will be is that vegan restaurants now or restaurants now uh, the the impact is going to be restaurants now serve vegan food one day a week that is your impact but to farmers how if, you're going to approach that to those this thing is going to be your activity so if i if we wanted to show a positive outcome of that to farmers would ah, be that the proposed could... project is to improve potato famine for enterprise development to improve potato famine for potato farming for uh, yes so you can make it you can uh, make it much more targeted uh, virginia with regards to with for enterprise development so when you say enterprise development who are those enterprise entrepreneurs or who are the farmers are you women so how many women with 200 women with 300 women is there a location that you have in mind yes so you can put the location now uh, you know women women in this location have improved potato farming and so we are saying enterprise development what you can do is also you could show show an improve in maybe the livelihood or an improve in income so an improve in income would would mean that your the the, 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 the the enterprise has been developed so an improved income in potato farming for so and so amount of women in so and so region maybe that could be something like that so the targeted thing so your improve in income is say maybe a 10% improvement in income a 20% improvement in income and that's where you draw your baseline there no problem any time and in fact this is what we have been doing because we have been working with women farmers in a tribal area in andhra pradesh and uh, looking at uh, looking at uh, again improved livelihood and improved income and one of the baselines for us has been uh looking at a change in income so maybe if it's if they were the current uh, you know the current uh, the baseline for us was the, on average they were making about uh 8000 rupees a, a month now they're doing 10000 rupees a month so you monitor that over a period of 6 months or 8 months you know and then you also have in india what also happens is that you have seasonal time because farming doesn't happen throughout the year so all those things you have to keep in mind when you are doing that you know so don't over estimate and don't over a uh, project also so keep a numbers as uh, practical as possible also as well so that's why coming down to this monitoring and evaluation of uh, the thing it is so important to the monitoring and evaluation because oh, number one what it does is that it helps you and your team keep in check of the activities and helps review the progress made at every step so you know whether you know if if you are put in your activities and in your implementation sheet that you are going to have 3000 workshops but after 6 months you have only done three workshops so then you'll have to take a, a course correction right to see that so always have a monitoring and evaluation number one within your team also this is also and it's good to it's good to elaborate this in your in your uh, proposal because they will ask you how do how do you plan to monitor and evaluate the project within that's one question that always comes from the from the funding agency so looking at you know having regular meetings with your team 
looking at looking at the monitoring tools keep somebody in charge to collect those data keep uh, keep field people in charge to collect the data from the field somebody to analyze the data coming in and it's good so you'll have all those things and you'll develop a frame of monitoring for the project as well as for reporting because what also happens is once you have this data coming in your reporting becomes very very easy your reporting can happen within a day or two. you don't have to sit hours and uh, this thing looking for data looking for the simple but everything is there within your monitoring framework and uh, this thing so you can just look at take out the data from there and then elaborate on that and this has helped me i started writing reports now within like in a days that once the data comes in from the field once the data comes in from those who are responsible i just give them a timeline saying that dude can you please uh, send me this data by so and so time so that i can how do you factor all these into an application form that simply ask for project description project goals and measure your progress so you put that in measuring your progress right and uh, daniel you can put this in measure your progress so how you going to measure your progress you just put in bullet points you don't need to give in a full uh, 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 essay on it. You just put bullet points saying that we will monitor our this thing through monitoring tools, through uh, uh, you know regular review meetings, maybe having uh, online meetings with the field team. So you can put that uh, this thing. But also, also that's one thing. Also keep in mind is the word count of the proposal, right? You can not only to go to three hundred pages. You keep it if your project asks you to do stuff like this, you put it in bullet points and put that. So you don't have to write down essays for for everything. and the thing is that if you are simply ask for project description you have your project description is when you are writing a project description you also have to write the problem statement why you are addressing that your project goals your goals will ask you for the objective so how you going to reach your goals it is good to it is good to articulate that please articulate that even in your project goals you just have to write one statement one sentence you don't need to write a whole again as a paragraph write a project goal and within those goals how you are going to achieve those indicators you know that you look at those indicators three or four lines that's it you don't have to do that you can do all this within two sheets of paper now i mean it depends also on on the uh, funding agency usually they give you they tell you don't go more than 20 pages don't go more than 10 pages we had one where that said don't go more than two pages Yes, we will come to this. Uh, this thing, uh, we will come to the uh, this uh, very very relevant question, Dixoni. Uh, I think uh, it is write down, write it in the present tense. Write it in the present tense. Also, write it in the third person, or write it saying that uh, INEC is going to be doing that. Don't say we or you know they will be doing this or uh, we will be doing that. So the INEC team is going to be doing this, or the INEC facilitator will be doing this, or the INEC, INEC will approach. uh you know the government agencies so don't stay away from pronouns when you're saying that don't say we will be doing that or you know they will be doing this so when you're saying that be very particular say i'm just i'm saying inec because we inec is an organization i represent right so inec will engage with these organizations or the inec will talk to uh, 10000 farmers so you keep that in mind that you always write, write in the present tense and uh, stay away from pronouns No, no. INEC is the organization that I work for, so that's why I said INEC is I N E C C, or fifty by forty will engage with three thousand farmers. What to be included on the project summary? The project summary again is your is uh, the problem statement, and the problem statement we went through in the beginning has all the thing why you're addressing it, why you need to address it. So that could be a one pager. maybe a little bit background sometimes also what happens is that the organization or the funding agency asks for a background of the organization that is applying so you might might want to keep that ready at hand already that you can use for the printing or <laughs> in the project summary you put that saying that 50 by 40 has been engaged in this location in india for the last <laughs> 15 years and uh, the thing so one of the thing will come in your also credibility comes in in the project summary with uh, relating to the intervention that you have so in the project uh, when you are included in the project summary is you have the problem statement uh, the intended impact and the way you want to achieve it in a very very short form and the experience that your organization has <laughs>
coming down to the budget this is the last second last slide to uh, this thing keep in mind also when you are writing doing your activities whatever activities that you have because the budget is also going to go with your proposal right so keep in mind that all those activities that you have your implementation sheet that your budget aligns with all those activities that you have that you have put there for the thing so sometimes it's a, they, they might ask you for a three year budget and now to work for a three year budget you just go to your implementation sheet saying in the first four quarters these are the activities that i'm going to have and you have a budget for that the second four quarters that's for the second year too and your your third uh, quarter, third fourth four quarters is going to be a year three so you have your budget make sure your budget align with your activities please keep in mind that when you are this thing when you are writing when you are writing your budget also keep uh, keep aside a little bit of money for communication for printing of documents printing of because a lot of us get involved only in in uh, you know program work but keep aside a little bit of budget for communication developing communication tools developing uh, you know uh, social media uh, tools uh you know some maybe design some kinds of thing keep that also in mind and uh, uh, donors like to see that that you know that you're also looking at because that also creates uh, this thing in terms of how you're going to be uh, sustainable after the project gets over like if your reports are going to be you know at par with the uh, corporate or your reports are going to be so well designed for this thing uh, thing it is going to be really helpful to keep a little budget and they are willing to help in keeping a budget for communication any other questions regarding the budget please feel free to uh, let me know and then we finally come down to you know when you are before sending out the proposal uh, make sure that uh, you have the title page should have the project title the name of the donor agency your logo the contact information of the person who will be contacted for if they have to get this because you might be 10 people working on the on the proposal right but it will be one person's name that goes there Uh, a table of content and the table of content also helps you in terms of you know when you are doing that why uh, all the kind of documents are going some of them sometimes they might ask you for an annexes in terms of uh, this thing because they might ask you for feasibility study supposing you are doing something on uh, you know land rights or something like that they might ask you for some feasibility study reports that you have already done previously so you might need to do that put that in the table of contents and it's an uh, an uh, a page explaining the acronyms what are those kinds of acronyms that you have used because if it is a foreign agency right they might not understand the words used in india for pri is like which is a panchayati raj institute or you know csr or something like that so you it will be good to also outline all that uh, all the uh, acronyms that you are using over there uh, again it was good to have a document a separate document of the organization it's well, itself so that could also go there if if they don't ask you within the proposal itself so you can also keep that these things can be kept ready you know you don't have to wait for the last minute to do this so you can do all these things and keep ready they will also ask you now organizations are also asking you for your theory of change for the proposal for the pro this thing so you will uh, this thing if you all need any help with that please feel free to get in touch with me i can send you some samples of the theories of change that we have done many of the funding agencies now asking for theories of change even corporate csrs are asking for theories of change for the proposal so you develop like a tool like a one pager with regards to all the you know what is the problem what is the impact what are the activities the, inco the input the output the outcomes all those things so uh, keep that in mind which could also go as an annex to the to the funding agency ensure your numbers pages headings are complete you know as an active sentences uh keep in mind the limit for the total number of pages of the proposal don't go over and above the numbers or the pages that they have asked for attach appendices uh give bibliography and references this is you know if you are taking the quoting some other document or a, a report please put those uh, references there could you please share with us a sample of proposal document for reference and learning purpose uh we guy could do that i can the upasana and the question to others so the dictionary also i mean each proposal is also different each funding agency is very very different for thing you know so to create a template is a little bit difficult but i will i will see what i can do in terms of at least developing the project proposal for you 
uh, what are those key things that could uh, this thing usually what happens is funding agencies already have their own templates that they want you to follow which is also good for them because then they know all the different all the different uh, uh, organization that are applying to them are you know in a in a standard format for this thing is it necessary to use template for developing project proposal use the template of the organization they will usually send you a template but my experience all organizations all funding agencies all csrs have sent us a template before uh, applying for a thing or if this a mail comes in they will send you a template for that i wouldn't rack your brains in creating a template for but what i would suggest is you do a template for your theory of change and keep that for your organization so that could be done and you can you can it can go over different interventions different activities different uh, objectives so this is the last slide of the uh, of my presentation i think we can uh, it was really really enriching to have all of you here and uh, follow all the things if you have any uh, any i mean feedback anything that i could have done better or anything that you want me to elaborate on please feel free really i try to make this as informal as possible Yeah, I was just saying that you know it was really great that you covered so many aspects because most uh, many a times people miss on the theory of change and they straight away start talking about proposal writing, what a proposal is, what are the components of a proposal, but without understanding the logic of theory of change, it's very difficult. So I think you did a fantastic job. Myron just wanted to know what is the ideal length of a proposal? Like you know, sometimes it also depends. Uh, length also sometimes uh, what happens is that the donor agency will tell you don't keep it. I mean, twenty sometimes it's twenty pages, sometimes it is ten uh, pages. It also depends on that. If if it is not clear, it's always good to ask the donor agency how long how how long should the proposal be. It all depends. It all depends. It also depends in terms of you know uh, what how big the donor uh, donor agency is. uh you know so if they've got people to read if they've got people they've got a big team they've got all those things so it it all depends and if it's not clear always ask this reply to them and say how long should the proposal be if it is not clear instead of sending them something that is so long or sending them something that is too short then uh, them coming back with those questions you know another But thing i wanted to know was regarding okay please uh, please go on no cuz like the german germans usually have about a 20 page for their thing by the german funding agencies where that we have been working with a 20 uh, 20 pages we have been working with an indian organization that is a funding they like not more than 5 pages so it it all depends and then you tailor make it so then you then you see how long how much of a story you want to write you were saying something Yeah, I was just you know at times what happens is with smaller organizations they don't have the bandwidth to you know hire a, uh, a probably they don't have the skill set or maybe even the money to have hire a tech, like you know professional proposal writer. So what what would you suggest to them? How should they go about? That is I'm saying suggesting is that doing the theory of change. If you have your theory of change that is there and you can you don't need to you don't need to wait for a proposal or a call to come in. You can already start doing that. brainstorming within your team if it is two or three of you all keep the theory of change ready at hand do the mapping the the service and all a template i can send all a couple of templates you know that are there or you can do it online because online you there do theory of change for an ngo you will get different templates that you will see that is that works for you for this thing so if you have the theory of change that is there you know exactly so you can do it for different interventions and keep it and this is what we have done for all our units at uh, this thing for education we have a theory of change for advocacy we have a theory of change for you know climate resilience we have a theory of change with women farmers men farmers so we have all those theories of change ready and then it doesn't take much time then afterwards to you know feed into writing the proposal somebody two or three people can do that so that's why the theory of change has helped us immensely immensely okay um thank you very much for your presentation i just want to ask a question uh, because um i recently joined an organization where um i have to um prepare proposal write grant um, grant writing and so many develop projects and so many other things that i do but i noticed that um that some grant application because i know that some grant application actually gives you questions to 
um, write about, like, okay, the, the, the title of your project, your objective, or your, what you want to achieve and all of that. So they give out the questions, yeah. what you should, what you should answer. Um, at times it could be numbers and all of that. So I just want to understand the difference between such application and um, the proposed, like this one that you have to develop a proposal and submit or something like that. Because um, based on what you what you um, just analyzed in your presentation, if you are to answer, if you are to apply for a grant, you would apply or you provide your answers based on the question they ask in that um, in their own form. So you don't have to go beyond that. You just make sure that your answers are very direct and specific to the question they are asking. So, in such condition or situation, what do you do to make sure that probably you capture um, some of the things you've listed in your um, in your presentation? I don't know if you understand my question. Thank you. Yes, I understood your question, and I know also because sometimes what happens as uh, uh, Sunday, I think it's a good question that you raised because sometimes you also have these online forms that are limited to you know just a uh, couple of words or a couple of number this thing you know for this thing and how does one look at uh, articulating stuff like that this comes from experience this comes from experience you know the more you write the more you this thing you will also understand and also look at those forms that are asking you saying those those forms uh, you'll also understand how donors work those donors that are asking those kinds of questions know the seriousness and know how professional it is to ask those kinds of questions because then you don't have to come back to ask you 10,000 times, right? Because if, otherwise you'll go back and forth with the donor. They'll be like, okay, what is going to be your indicators? What is going to be your location? What is going to be your this thing? You'll go back and forth. Usually if it's, if it's a very, very detailed project proposal questionnaire, then you know that they'll go on. You answered all those questions and they will get back to you immediately and say that, okay, dude, you, uh, I mean, you, you've gone to the next round or you've gone to this thing. If it is not as clear as uh, as what they're asking for, then you send in those annexures. You send in those annexures that I was talking about, right? You have your uh, organization thing. You have your theory of change. You have those things. You can send it to them separately. Send that separately within the framework. Of, so you fill your form up and you send those other things separately. This is what we do. So they don't ask you for a budget. If they don't ask you for things, you don't need to do it, but it will be good for you to send that budget to them so they, they will know and whether they're interested, they will send it. This is respond back to you. So send those information in a separate annexure or in a separate uh, folder. Thank you very much. Uh, it was a nice presentation, learning session since from the beginning. Right? I really appreciate uh, for everyone who was concerned on this. Um, I have a concern directed to OPSA, uh, goes directed to 50 by 40. Uh, what about the uh, next action step from this uh, session that we had? Thank you. Okay, I mean, the next steps, uh, see, the main idea behind uh, developing this series was to help uh, grassroots organizations in, you know, fundraising. So that is already been done. But in case you have any questions and doubts, we've already shared the presentations of the previous sessions. We'll be also sharing the presentation of today's session with you. The recordings will follow. There is some editing that is to be done before sharing it. So we'll be sharing uh, uh, the all the session recordings with you and uh, in case you have any doubts you have our email ids P please feel free to connect to us if you have any you know doubt related to fundraising or writing a proposal you can you know you just write to us and uh, hopefully we can come up with another training series and uh, hope to see you guys again so yeah it would be good uh, upasana maybe do, do a theory of change in depth uh, theory of change would be nice to uh, do that i mean developing some monitoring tools uh, you know how does one look at monitoring tools and uh, go about evaluation i think that also could be done for the future so thank you all of you for uh, i'm i'm so happy this